Hello and welcome to Clarity Education Systems, also known as PMHMPTesting.com. I'm Dr. John Rossi, a certified psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, and in this video, we will be going over neuroleptic malignant syndrome. So NMS is a dangerous neurological emergency that can be life-threatening and is associated with the use of antipsychotic medications. It is characterized by a distinctive set of symptoms, including changes in mental status, muscle rigidity, fever, and dysautonomia. Mortality is primarily caused by the dysautonomic manifestations of the disease and systemic complications. NMS can affect people of all ages, but it is most commonly seen in middle-aged adults with no significant difference between males and females. While NMS is most commonly associated with high-potency first-generation antipsychotic drugs like haloperidol and flufenazine, Every class of antipsychotic drug has been implicated, including low-potency and second-generation drugs like clonazepine, risperidone, and olanzapine. Even antiemetic drugs like metoclopramide, promethazine, and levosulpiride have been linked to NMS. Patients with a history of NMS are at a higher risk of developing the condition again if they are re-exposed to antipsychotic medications. The risk of NMS can be further increased by the concurrent use of other medications such as lithium and valproic acid. Symptoms of NMS typically develop within the first two weeks of starting antipsychotic therapy, but the condition can occur after a single dose or after years of treatment with the same drug. It's not a dose-dependent phenomenon, but higher doses do increase the risk. Recent or rapid dose escalation, switching from one drug to another, and parenteral administration are all risk factors. Certain psychiatric conditions, acute catatonia, and extreme agitation have been identified as risk factors. This could be because these conditions often require higher doses, rapid escalation, and parenteral therapy. Other potential risk factors, such as accompanying use of lithium or other psychotropic drugs, higher potency agents, depot formulations or injection formulations of a medication which release slowly over time to permit less frequent administration of a drug, comorbid substance abuse, neurologic diseases, and acute medical illnesses may also increase occurrences. The pathogenesis of NMS is not entirely understood, but it is thought to be related to a blockage of dopamine receptors in the central nervous system, as seen with antipsychotic drugs leading to an excess of dopamine receptor blockage, causing a decrease in dopaminergic transmission. This decrease in dopamine can lead to a cascade of physiologic changes. The resulting symptoms can cause rhabdomyolysis, renal failure, and disseminated intervascular coagulation. Additionally, the syndrome may involve dysfunction of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, leading to dysautonomia and the characteristic symptoms of tachycardia, hypertension, and diaphoresis. NMS is characterized by a unique set of symptoms. The tetrad of NMS symptoms typically evolves over one to three days. The initial symptom of NMS is typically a change in mental status. This may manifest as agitated delirium with confusion rather than psychosis. Catatonic signs and mutism may also be present. If left untreated, NMS can progress to profound encephalopathy, resulting in an inertia and eventually a coma. Muscular rigidity in NMS is often severe and generalized. It's characterized by a lead pipe rigidity. This is the presence of a constant uniform resistance to passive movement throughout the entire range of motion. It is used to describe the rigid, inflexible nature of the affected muscles, which can feel as if they are made of solid metal, like a lead pipe. This type of rigidity is caused by a disruption in the balance of certain neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and acetylcholine, which regulate muscle tone and movement. Superimposed tremors may result in a ratcheting sensation or a cogwheel phenomenon. Patients may also experience prominent excessive salivation, difficulty speaking, or difficulty swallowing. Hyperthermia, or an elevated body temperature, is one of the hallmark features of NMS. The exact mechanism by which the antipsychotic medications cause hyperthermia in NMS is not completely understood. It is thought to be related to a drug's effects on the central nervous system and the disruption of the body's thermoregulatory system, which controls temperature. In severe cases, hyperthermia can lead to multi-organ failure and death if left untreated. 
Autonomic instability typically takes the form of tachycardia, labile or high blood pressure, and tachypnea. Dysrhythmias may occur in diaphoresis is often profuse. Prompt recognition and management of symptoms in NMS is critical for improving patient outcomes. There is no specific laboratory test to diagnose NMS. However, lab tests are important to evaluate the severity of the illness and to rule out other possible causes of symptoms. The following lab tests are often ordered for patients suspected of having NMS, CK or creatinine kinase. CK is a muscle enzyme that is released into the bloodstream when there is damage to muscle tissue. In NMS, the extreme muscle rigidity and breakdown that occurs can lead to significantly elevated levels of CK. The degree of CK elevation can also be used to monitor a response to treatment, as decrease in CK levels is usually seen as clinical improvement. However, it is important to note that CK elevation can also occur in other conditions, such as rhabdomyolysis. So, additional evaluation is needed to confirm a diagnosis of NMS. Myoglobinuria, which is the presence of muscle protein myoglobin in the urine, demonstrates evidence of extreme muscle rigidity and breakdown. If the kidneys are unable to filter out excess myoglobin, it can accumulate in the urine. Myoglobinuria can lead to acute kidney injury, or AKI, due to the accumulation of myoglobin in the renal tubules, which can cause tubular obstruction and damage. Urine may appear dark or reddish-brown in color. Treatment for myoglobinuria includes aggressive hydration to prevent AKI. The provider should monitor white blood cell count. Leukocytosis refers to an elevation of white blood cells, typically above the normal range of 4,000 to 11,000. In the context of NMS, a consistent laboratory finding is leukocytosis, with the WBC count typically ranging from 10,000 to 40,000. A left shift may also be present, which means that there is an increased number of immature white blood cells, such as neutrophilic bands, indicating an increased demand for white blood cells due to infection or inflammation. The degree of leukocytosis can vary depending on the severity of NMS and other factors. Additional laboratory findings include mild elevations of lactate dehydrogenase, alkaline phosphatase, and liver transmininases. Comprehensive Metabolic Panel, or CMP. Electrolyte abnormalities can occur in NMS due to dehydration, muscle breakdown, and rhabdomyolysis. Common electrolyte abnormalities include hypernatremia, high sodium levels, hyperkalemia, high potassium levels, hyperphosphatemia, high phosphate levels, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesinemia, and metabolic acidosis. These abnormalities can lead to complications such as cardiac arrhythmias, muscle weaknesses, and renal failure. It is important to monitor electrolyte levels and correct any imbalances promptly to prevent further complications. Liver function tests, or LFTs, look for elevated liver enzymes that may be seen in patients with NMS, particularly if they have developed liver damage due to medication toxicity or some other underlying medical condition. The diagnosis of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is typically based on a combination of clinical features and laboratory findings. The following criteria are often used to make a diagnosis. Exposure to a dopamine antagonist, fever, muscle rigidity, altered mental status, autonomic instability, and laboratory findings. Differential diagnoses that may be considered include serotonin syndrome, a potentially life-threatening condition that occurs when there is an excess of serotonin in the body. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that is involved in various physiological functions such as mood regulation, sleep, and appetite. It is produced in the body and can also be obtained from certain medications such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, tricyclics, and monoamine oxidase inhibitors. These symptoms of serotonin syndrome can range from mild to severe and may include agitation, confusion, high fever, seizures, and even coma. Malignant hyperthermia, or MH, is a rare but life-threatening condition that can occur during anesthesia. It is caused by a genetic mutation that affects the regulation of calcium in muscle cells, leading to uncontrolled release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and triggering a cascade of events that result in hypermetabolic states. The classic signs of MH include a rapid increase in body temperature, muscle rigidity, acidosis, tachycardia, and hypercapnia. If not recognized and treated promptly, MH can lead to multi-organ failure and death. Malignant catatonia. 
a rare neuropsychiatric syndrome that is characterized by a combination of catatonic symptoms, such as stupor, mutism, and rigidity, along with fever, autonomic instability, and altered mental status. It is often seen in patients with an underlying psychiatric disorder, such as bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, but can also be triggered by other factors, such as substance abuse, infection, or medication changes. If left untreated, malignant catatonia can progress rapidly and lead to life-threatening complications such as respiratory failure or cardiovascular collapse. The approach to treating patients with NMS should prioritize clinical severity and diagnostic certainty. In cases where symptoms are severe, close monitoring and treatment in an intensive care unit may be necessary. The most critical treatment for NMS is to discontinue the causative agent. This step should be prioritized above all else. The provider should offer supportive care for conditions resulting from NMS, for example, dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, acute renal failure, rhabdomyolysis, cardiac arrhythmias, and cardiac arrest. This includes maintaining cardiovascular stability, maintaining uvolemic states using intravenous fluids, in cases where CK levels are significantly elevated, administering high-volume intravenous fluids with urine alkalinization may be an effective approach to prevent or reduce the risk of renal failure due to rhabdomyolysis. Lower fever using cooling blankets or more aggressive physical measures such as an ice water gastric lavage and ice packs in the axilla. Lower blood pressure if markedly elevated. Pharmacological management. Patients with moderate to severe clinical symptoms of NMS are often treated with medications. Bromocryptine, this is used to restore lost dopaminergic tone. Providers often prescribe this medication, a dopamine agonist, because it is well tolerated by psychiatric patients. The recommended starting dose is 2.5 milligrams administered orally or through a nasogastric tube. This occurs every six to eight hours with the dose increased gradually up to a maximum of 40 milligrams per day. Once NMS symptoms are under control, it is advisable to continue taking bromocryptine for seven to 14 days and then gradually taper off the medication. Next is dantrolene or dantrium. It's a direct acting skeletal muscle relaxant. In adults, doses typically range from one to 2.5 milligrams per kilogram IV, which can be repeated up to a maximum of 10 milligrams per kilogram per day. The medication's efficacy includes reducing heat production and rigidity, with its effects often reported within minutes of administration. However, there is a risk of hepatotoxicity and dantrolene should be avoided if liver function tests indicate severe abnormalities with the patient. Remember that providers will need to act quickly when symptoms arise. A final note, if it is determined by the provider and patient that restarting an antipsychotic agent is necessary, the patient may or may not experience recurrent NMS symptoms. If required, you will want to minimize the risk of a reoccurrence. Possible interventions include waiting at least two weeks before resuming therapy, using a lower rather than higher potency agent, starting with a lower dose and then titrating slowly up, avoiding accompanying lithium therapy, and then finally avoiding any instances that may cause dehydration. Remember, NMS is a rare and potentially life-threatening condition caused by antipsychotic treatment, and prompt recognition and treatment are essential. If NMS is suspected, the patient should be immediately transferred to a medical facility for further evaluation and management. Thank you for watching. This has been Dr. Rossi with Clarity Education Systems. Visit www.pmhmptesting.com to learn more about how we can help you prepare for and pass your ANCC certification exam. Please support our efforts by liking this video, sharing with others, and subscribing to our channel. Happy studying!